Now we will continue our forum with a panel discussion. And I'm sure that in the next uh, half an hour or so, uh, we will hear great inspiring stories and the wonderful conversations about the mechanical engineering and metalworking industry here in Latvia. Panel discussion, Industry 4.0, case studies, Latvia success stories. Now I would like to invite our panel discussion members actually to come and uh, join me on the stage right now. Welcome, welcome, uh, please uh, take your seats. And uh, I invite a member of the management board at Perusa, Mr. Roberts Dlochi, managing director at MindSource, uh, Mr. Thomas Carlson, and um, Director General at uh, Schneider Electric Baltics Lithuania in Latvia, Mr. Denis Gatsicha. Welcome and CEO of company Robo Eats, Mr. Janis Poruks. Welcome. Well, welcome, gentlemen. Uh, first, I would like to start actually that you will have approximately three minutes time to present your company. But before that, uh, could you shortly each describe what defines success uh, and what and at what point the regular business story becomes business success story please Lohi, yes i believe uh, success is being brave enough and um, capable to see uh, and to get together uh, what you have seen with what you predict what uh, would happen yeah? and then be brave enough to just to implement this yeah even it's unknown something. Mm -hmm. Mr. Porox. Well, I believe that everybody has his own success uh, measures. And uh, for one, success is a product who reached the market. For uh, somebody else, the success is something new that he has built. So we cannot tell every person have his each measures for success. Mm -hmm. Mr. Carlson. Yes, I think um, uh, success is uh, measured actually on the on the last row in in the re result of the company. So uh, each uh, system that we implement uh, must pay for itself, must bring profit to to our clients. It's it's everything we do add value to our clients. It's and important for the success of their their companies. And Mr. Gatsiha, welcome. Your thoughts on success? Hello. Hello. Yeah, there actually might be different aspects, different angles of this, but in my opinion, the success, one of the definition is, uh, it's about the change, it's about the transformation, it's about where you want to be. Uh, you know, it's uh, leading the change in where you want to be. And when after the particular uh, things, you can, uh, I can say that it was successful. It's about uh, the, the way how people can feel and relate particular things happens so it's about transformation I would say and the change mm -hmm. thank you now we'll uh, continue with the uh, presentations about on um, your success stories uh, so three minutes approximately so we have some time left afterwards to to talk about your companies and maybe hear some questions from our participants uh, so uh, mr. Glochi the stage is yours please okay uh, shortly about uh, Perusa. Perusa is an engineering and manufacturing company which again uh, streams uh, to be uh, successful in new areas. Yeah? Where is my presentation? Oh, okay, back. So everyone knows this um, picture of uh, Industry 4.0, how we came. Uh, initially it was slow and then it raised up. The same uh, did Perusa. Uh, simple mechanic, uh, sophisticated mechanical uh, solutions, then uh, first uh, PLC usages, uh, first computer vision AE, uh, and then sophisticated robots and automation, and now we en uh, are entering uh, IT universe. What does it mean? Uh, it means that we have to uh, think about uh, the complex things, and uh, it's in, uh, now uh, everything should be uh, taught uh, as interoperability, um, decentralization, real-time analytics, realization, service orientation, like the Siem, uh, um, Siemens uh, uh, vice president said. And nothing, uh, what does it mean? Nothing is stable anymore. In fact, 
uh, must have meaningful data gathered and inform, uh, informed decision made. And this is what we are in the position to help companies. So uh, I, I can just draw a very simple picture. Yeah? So uh, anybody in the center uh, of, of company should think about equipment, should think about inbound uh, materials to be transformed and the technological process. And uh, all the time information is, is tra traveling in and, in and out. And <coughs> in fact, uh, the, the situation is more complex in real life, yeah, there's uh, not, not just three, four, uh, four, five, six, uh, seven inputs uh, you should follow at, and uh, finally you are really upset, and decisions uh, need to be done uh, at, for every decision, and you can do this uh, if you are uh, well informed. So, uh, not just words, the, this is what, what Perusa is doing uh, now. Uh, we are in robotics, we are in some um, in very smart solutions, yeah, you see, uh, this, everything is, is made, uh, engineered, uh, made, installed, and programmed by, by Perusa. I am really proud on, on uh, our uh, um, capability. So, what does uh, digitalization uh, take? It takes make a decision and start to change uh, complex digitalization of all suitable processes. Yeah? It takes uh, to reassess and redefine all processes. Uh, people uh, can make uh, uh, shortcuts. Um, uh, digital world cannot take shortcuts uh, uh, to the full extent like, like people do. It takes time, and uh, Perusa work it out in for internal processes for several years already. In fact, yeah, and now Be Perusa is becoming an IT solution company. I proudly announce it. Yeah, so uh, uh, what does it take? It takes to join everything together, and Perusa. Uh, knows equipment, technological process, and raw materials, final products. Therefore, uh, we can help uh, the guy in the center to make correct decisions. And he is happy now. <laughs> so, Perusa um, is uh, at your digital and industrial purposes, and we are born in Latvia. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Delahi. Now, let's continue with the presentation from uh, MindSource. Mr. Thomas Carlson, please. Thank you very much. I'll see if I can find my presentation also. Um, uh, I represent, uh, represent MindSource in Sweden. It's a Swedish innovation company that works with automation in various industries, from metalworking to furniture to healthcare to uh, a number of different branches with volume producers. Uh, we design entire factories or lines. We source technology and help our, our clients to, to um, automate the production. So typical clients to us can be companies that come to us and ask what can be automated, efficient, and, and bring down cost, for example. Uh, I will show you a few cases. I think I maybe lost a slide in there. Uh, uh, I start first with, with uh, the digital factory because it's, we are talking about uh, Industry 4.0. We have developed uh, something that we call the MindSource simulation engine. It's based on factory simulation, it's dis discrete event simulation, and it's all about the digital model of the entire factory. So the reality is, is transformed to a digital copy. This copy can be loaded with information, and the information, as uh, uh, the man from Siemens uh, explained for you, can come from the process. It can be process data from the components from Siemens, for example, sitting in the line. It can be also planning information from, from uh, MPS systems and, and, uh, and uh, uh, other systems. The, 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 this information can be, can be uh, processed to create in real time decisions. And then we talk about artificial intelligence. We upload everything we know about the process. We process it and let the simulation engine take decisions about what is better, how can we plan better. And then the simulation engine sends back information to the, the, uh, the, the factory. We have um, done a lot of projects. Uh, one is IKEA, it's not metalworking, but it's uh, still automation. 
uh, in order to automate and to lower the cost to increase capacity with a great success. Uh, this one is a very interesting um, uh, case where we use artificial intelligence, deep learning technology for uh, inspection of engine parts, casted alum aluminium parts. We are based in Sweden, as I said, and uh, I see the possibilities for cooperation with uh, Latvia. We have the possibility to buy equipment and production and to export to, to Latvia as well. Of course, our services. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Carlson. Uh, Dennis Gatsika, please tell us more about the success you have at the Schneider Electric Baltics. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Let me know if you can see the the presentation. So. Yeah, we yeah, see. Yeah, I represent. Thank you. Uh, uh, I represent uh, Baltic countries uh, general manager. So today I would like shortly to introduce the company and uh, the success what we have in Latvia, is our uh, smart factory, Alexel plant in Giga. So shortly about the company, uh, just key information. So uh, we are uh, we provide the the energy and automation digital solution for efficiency and sustainability. So for us, the basically the two things, efficiency and sustainability are the key. We actually are uh, more than 27 uh, billion euros company as of uh, end of 2019, and 5% of um, our revenues we devote to the R&D. So quite uh, well positioned globally uh, across the regions, and uh, we have uh, more than 1,035,000 1, employees all, all over the countries. And today, the purpose is to, uh, to present a bit the, the, the smart factory, what we have in Riga. So this, the factory originally was founded in 1993. Uh, the Schneider Electric Group joined in uh, 1999. So the key vocation is to produce the electronic devices uh, for the EMEA market. And uh, there's some kind of information on the basis of what kind of the lines we have there. and. Um, what do we do? So we have more than also 340 employees over there. So, and uh, uh, some years ago we actually started the journey. So in the whole in the, in the group in the in the company in the, in the whole world, it's uh, about uh, making our own factories smart. So basically in, in Schneider, we say that uh, we know how important smart operations for the for the manufacturing industry because uh, we simply we just use these technologies ourselves. We have uh, quite an entire chain uh, of the supply chain and we apply to our, in our supply chain uh, our eco-structure, uh, industrial in internet of things, the technologies across our smart factories and across our uh, smart distribution centers. They're the key components what you see exactly implemented in the Lexel factory. So as, as you, uh, I will present shortly some of the technologies and uh, there will be a bit more information about uh, the, the few technologies on the bottom we'll see on some short video. So typical example that could be on the, on the top left corner, you can see a so-called MOM, uh, Manufacturing Operation Management. This is basically the software, per software solution, uh, which actually definitely provides information about the, uh, the deficiency, about uh, all lines availability, you know, the differences per line, per shift, and so on and so on. So it's uh, the key, key, key software dedicated for the operators, you know, and for them. Uh, uh, for, the, for the shifts. And then we have uh, traceability and the interlocking it's also software, which is available at, uh, at each line. Uh, definitely uh, the, key, the key purposes here is it's, it's about the quality, to, to be able to trace the, the production quality and uh, in case of uh, anything, you can actually recall the particular parts and so on. Then we have also um, invested a lot in the advanced robotics. So in fact, what you see on the picture on the top uh, right corner, there's two types of the technologies on the one side. On the one picture, you might see the, the cobot, so-called collaborative robot, uh, the, the robot which is uh, able to uh, communicate with, interact with the, with the human. And another one is uh, AGV. Um, AGV is uh, automatic guided vehicle, so dedicated for just uh, moving the uh, empty boxes, uh, moving some other waste and so on. And for the key purpose of the cobot is definitely to eliminate uh, routine job. So where you can actually um, 
elimination of the routine as the key purpose. Then also what you can see is uh, 3D printing. So 3D printing, we also started to use uh, uh, back in 2014 in our factory. So uh, some key purposes, of course, it's about, we have actually different, of course, solution, different type of the 3D printers and so on. And then uh, key, po uh, key point is, so there is, uh, is, is, this is the for prototyping, it's for the spare parts. And uh, the key knowledge, of course, it's about the uh, 3D drawing in, in order to have the solution. And then actually the two more solutions what you see on the bottom, IoT analytics and augmented virtual reality, I would like to, to show a bit more. So as you might see while I'll, I'll speak about augmented reality, uh, this, you can see at the same time the video I recorded from our factory. So this is the, uh, the key purpose is definitely to reduce the cost in the maintenance. And what we see across the across our factories uh, uh, by implementing particular uh, solutions that maintenance cost uh, reductions uh, 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 increase by from 30% to 50. And also the key point, as you see, that uh, when you actually scan, you, you need to have the, uh, the tablet when you scan, uh, it's actually uh, have the reference either to the picture or is it to the object. In this particular case, you see to the object. So basically it, it helps you to immediately, immediately to minimize the human errors, uh, you can guide, uh, you know, particular operator or the maintenance engineer uh, with the particular guides. And as you see, in our factory, for example, we have a lot of also the younger generation, uh, people who would prefer in order to, uh, to spend a lot of time, you know, with the reading the whole, uh, the manual, they can definitely, you can pre uh, record a, a particular videos, you know, with the particular guys how to, uh, to, for example, to, to find the information about a particular area, how to uh, do something and so on. This is the good example what you can put. And then definitely you can also, with this you can achieve much more efficiency and you can find much easier the particular information, uh, right? Just uh, it depends actually how how actually are, uh, how much information you uh, assign to the particular objects and, uh, and the particular line or machine and so on. So and so. Thank you. And also when you need, and uh, one more maybe, uh, uh, one, one more is about IoT analytics. And this is also a yeah, key point here is to, uh, to move from the reactive maintenance to the predictive maintenance, because what we have, we use our sensors, which we also produce, by the way, some of them we produce in, in our Lexel factory in Latvia. Um, for the whole Schneider, and uh, what we do, we able to analyze the trend anomaly. We able to uh, predict particular behavior, and we can do some uh, some steps before uh, the machine could actually uh, uh, get down. And by, by, by this, we can definitely save uh, a lot of a uh, lot of lot of money. So this is the short information it's about the collecting of information, analyzing through the software, and then. Uh, put everything into action. So this is just uh, the things what we have already here and then uh, our Lex factory. So. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gatsiha. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm sure there will be some uh, questions about the work you do um, just in a moment. Uh, we'll continue with uh, finally, let's hear from the CEO of Robo Eats, Mr. Jan Sporox. Please. Yes, thank you. So always it's better to show than tell. So maybe let's see the video, what mm -hmm. our company is doing. Uh, our company is developing a robotic system uh, for food service operators. Uh, basically, it's like a robotic chef. It's completely autonomous uh, system, which cooks and serves uh, individual meals for the final consumers. Uh, it will help um, food service operators to run over the challenges of uh, labor shortage, uh, the big labor turnover, and the consumers will interact with the system uh, through a mobile app, and it will give uh, very individual information about uh, meals we are eating, about diets, nutrition, and uh, much more to live uh, more healthier and better. Uh, we plan to open the first robotic restaurant here in Riga uh, in the beginning of next year. So I hope I will be able to show it in real life very soon. So this is how the next sushi will be made, yeah? Maybe not sushi at the moment, but uh, there will be thousands of different recipes. 
Wonderful. Well, uh, before we start our panel discussion, I want to remind our viewers, so you have a chance to ask your questions, particularly to each of the panel members, and uh, please use the link. If you're watching and you're the registered uh, member participant of the forum uh, via Zoom, if you're watching then on the top right corner, you have the Slido link with the ID number. Please use it to ask questions and just go nuts with the questions, all right? At the, at the end, we'll, we'll definitely address them. Now, success is a wonderful thing, and you all have it. But I'm sure that during the long way and, and, and many years, you have had tough decisions to make. Could you shortly please share one or two very tough decisions that you had to make, and now you, when you look back to that decision, you are absolutely confident it was, yes, it was the right decision. It was a tough one. We did it, and now we're, we're here. We're successful. Mr. Gatsika, maybe you can start. Yeah, yeah, I can. So, yeah, if we look back, so uh, one of the, let's say, toughest decisions when our company decided to implement the smart factory approach across our supply chain, and yes, to, to start to change the mind, it's it's about, you know, uh, just uh, you see like a lot of technologies in front of you that we produce for our customers and partners. And um, then you need to implement all the technologies at your own factory. And uh, this meaning that you need to go through the uh, significant change. It's about also people, it's about the open minds and an ability uh, to to lead through this change. This was, uh, I would say, uh, the biggest, let's say, uh, the biggest and the most important uh, part and which actually uh, led us to the success, what we have us today. Thank you. Mr. Dlohi. Uh, yeah. Um, I would say um, <coughs> the main uh, decision uh, that led uh, to our current success is to uh, hire go, uh, right people, spot people with um, eyes uh, open and uh, very energetic to, uh, to go for something new and then let them to go and um, do the things. Even, they, uh, if, even if they um, make mistakes, uh, don't, uh, don't punish them, but uh, encourage them to go further. We did it and uh, just believing that uh, they will lead us into um, robotics and computer vision, we just gave them a license, license not to kill, but a license to, um, to prosper, and uh, here we are. Thank you. R right people. Right people. Mr. Porox. I believe in uh, business you have to make tough decisions every day, so uh, you don't need to concentrate on is it tough or is it not tough. You just make it, go further, evaluate, did you make it right, and made the next decisions. So. Mm -hmm. It's every day chore. <laughs> Carlson, please. Uh, many times uh, we, um, we challenged ourselves to, to, uh, uh, to propose solutions that, we, that didn't exist. Uh, we promised customers uh, uh, to solve things that we didn't do before. So we had to invent it and believe in ourselves during the the process. So sometimes it was hard to, to fulfill the specification to reach the goal. Uh, many, many such decisions. Mm -hmm. So, but I'm happy that we have uh, been doing this and that because it, it, it moves forward. We can always uh, solve things together because we also have a lot of very clever subcontractors that is uh, very good and experts in what they do. So, as the uh, gentleman here said before, it's uh, very important to, to be surrounded by clever people. And mm -hmm. clever people in-house, but also as uh, subcontractors mm -hmm. that you can help, uh, take help from to, to, uh, to uh, reach the, these uh, goals and to develop further. Yeah, I think it's uh, very similar that, uh, uh, yeah, also Mr. Dlohi said that, yeah. that there, there should be a courage. There should be yes, a courage you, to trust you. Have to, your you have to, uh, to in order to, uh, to invent something new, you must go into the unknown. Yeah. You have to go outside your box into the, to the fog, so to speak, and try to find uh, the way. Uh, 
could you please share one or two mistakes that you would never, ever, ever want to repeat again? Ne I don't want to go back to that decision. I don't want to go back to that the situation. That was a, it was messy. It was terrible. Could you share one, please? I know that it's, uh, we will still consider you a success story. Don't worry. <laughs> you know, everything, is ba everything you learn is based on mistakes. Uh, actually, you have to do a lot of mistakes in order to, to reach forward. Okay. And, and Mr. Yeah? You want to uh, continue, sorry, Mr. Carls? Uh, I, I just wanted to say that everything actually is, is, is uh, you learn from the mistakes. So okay. I think it's so many that, that we did, so it's <laughs> we don't remember all. <laughs> it's similar like Mr. Porok said, it's just decisions every day, tough decisions and mistakes mm -hmm. while they're every day. Uh, Gatsika, please. Yeah, uh, I would say to be more realistic maybe in, in, in time aspects, because you know, when you have uh, so an ambition time planning, it usually goes the opposite side and brings the negative effect. So this is, uh, let's say, our learning. So mm -hmm. time planning and to be more realistic with this. Thank you. Mr. Dlohi, any comments on um, that? I believe uh, the biggest mistakes, um, again, uh, are related and what was uh, uh, were related with with um, uh, people uh, um, being too um, say uh, having pampered uncapable people who are uh, not uh, willing to uh, grow and deliver uh, hoping that they will um, fix their behavior no uh, if they there is no uh, drive for development yeah um, or, yeah, th th then you shouldn't uh, go further with them. You should drop them. Mm -hmm. And yeah. So the, there's a, it's a key key factor to pick people that that are yeah. surround you. Yeah. So. Yes, absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mr. Porox. Mm, we have the saying: uh, "What doesn't kill you makes you stronger." <laughs> and yes, you were right that, like with uh, the last question, the previous question. Uh, we need to learn from our big mistakes and if we take experience, if we take some knowledge from those mistakes what we make or even better from mistakes that makes others, uh, then uh, it is moving forward. Mm -hmm. um, as you well know, uh, market and client needs are always changing. Uh, what helps your company in those deci decisive moments? And uh, Mr. Blochy also uh, pointed that out uh, about the team. Uh, how big is uh, your team and what have you learned about the people you surround with? More maybe the comment because the, there are definitely companies watching and they want to learn and they want to have some insight in your company. How you pick people? What are the char characteristics of those? Yes, please. Um, Perusa is uh, close to 88 zero um, uh, people uh, together, yeah, and whole branch, uh, uh, whole range of um, specialists needed for our. Uh, they are engineers, mechanical, mechatronical, automation, robotics, uh, programmers, electricals, and very skilled um, uh, shop floor workers, yeah, who assemble um, uh, that, uh, our our machinery. So, um, yes, it's. Uh, um, Less it, it is hard to, to uh, provide industrial uh, um, solutions, yeah? good industrial solutions. So you have to have everything and you have to be surrounded with, with a number of subcontracting companies who deliver uh, some special knowledge when you need it. Yeah? So we are 80 and surrounded by, by um, a few, few dozens of uh, great suppliers. Uh, who are the decision makers in your company? How many are those people that sit around the table and, you know, I don't know, if that's the new market or that's the new product that you want to develop, how many people are there? Uh, it depends. Uh, regarding um, uh, market, um, I would say that those are uh, uh, four people yeah, that are deciding, but uh, how to steer everyday processes is completely responsibility of uh, department uh, manager, heads of departments, 
and uh, the board is not intervening uh, on daily decisions, we make uh, strategic uh, s solutions and support. We have to create a supporting atmosphere uh, to let our employees to perform the best. Mm -hmm. This is my task. Okay. Mr. Carlson, please. We work uh, with uh, Indian ES to in total uh, with our partners of around 20 people. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's important to, uh, to collect the, the team, as we have talked about, that have the, the, the skills to, to, uh, to, to make the projects, mm -hmm. uh, different skills. To, you asked before how to, to, uh, to find the people. To, it's actually very, very, very difficult. Uh, and it's a good question. We, of course, I think for me, it's, uh, it's not always about education, the highest education. It's about mindset more, about uh, how the people think and uh, if they are reliable and will do the work. When yeah. you stay somewhere abroad in a, a dusty factory in the night and you have to solve the problem, I am focused more on people that that, that do the work and don't abandon the customer or the project or the company. Would you say that uh, picking right people is one of the toughest It's, it's a key, uh, yes, it's uh, one of the toughest uh, things actually to be because uh, one famous guy said that if you want to be um, successful yourself, you have to, to, to uh, work with smart people. Mm -hmm. May, Mr. Gatsika, could you share about your team? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, first of all, yeah, in our company, we strongly believe in our people. Uh, we think that people make difference, and um, I think it's also uh, it's about culture. Uh, it's about the culture in our company. Uh, so, I think it's uh, when you see people engage, motivated, you know, on the on days that they want to lead, they they want to change, they want to seek new heights, they new, they would like to to try new things that we provide. Uh, we definitely are investing a lot um, uh, in our people. So we provide education, we provide uh, different leadership um, uh, trainings and uh, the skills and the uh, coaching and many many other things. So I think this is the key uh, key uh, success factor. You know, the people and uh, what they have is uh, it's a gold nest. So for sure. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Porux, please. Uh, well, I believe one of the most needed things is excitement about uh, the job you do because um, we can laugh, but I can tell that uh, nowadays YouTube can be an educational institution because uh, companies are representing their newest projects uh, and solutions on this platform and you can learn what is happening around and uh, use these technologies to go further in your company. Okay, thank you. And um, I want to remind our viewers that you have an option to ask uh, questions to our uh, panel um, discussion members here. Uh, so use the Slido link in the top right corner. Uh, there, there you can uh, write down the question and uh, just make sure that you also type to whom the question should be addressed. Um, uh, we have a couple minutes uh, left and I want to ask each of you what are the next goals for your company in the next three to five years? Please, Mr. Carlson. Um, I would, uh, li first of all, I would like to, to for, we are a company that, that have worked traditionally a lot with customized solutions, engineered solutions, because our foundation is engineering. Um, one of the challenges to, to do that is that you have a lot of development in each product. It makes it more difficult to sell many products. So we will, um, we will pick out um, areas, parts, machines from our solutions and pack them as products. So we can sell more standard solutions. Uh, if we do like that, we can also use sales networks. So we can, for example, here in Latvia, we can, we can work together with, with companies that, that maybe are agents or machine sellers that could represent us to deliver more quick uh, solutions that we have done before, machines that we have done before, not only these uh, development projects that we do. Mm 
And in the products that we will focus on, it will be quite difficult products, like we talked about deep learning inspection systems for, for details with clever, clever solutions for, for vision technology to inspect. We will work more with this collection of information from the industrial process to, to take smart decisions in the, in the simulation model. Uh, it's it's uh, very interesting. Uh, we would work with that and create uh, like a, like a, a, a cloud solution that that the clients can can uh, can use in, in in their factory. They can actually uh, build their entire factory in something that we call my factory in mm -hmm. the cloud. And you see in real time how your factory perform. You see the problems. You you can get out information for each line, each machine and also the, the big picture, uh, how you can replan the factory virtu with virtual decisions based on this simulation engine. So we have a lot of challenges to, to, to work with. Thank you for sharing. Mr. Porox, please. Uh, well, our next step is to open a robotic restaurant here in Riga, Latvia. And after we are collaborating with ABB uh, to bring the solution globally. So these are our next steps for the next year. And the uh, sushi? Yeah. <laughs> there will be no sushi, <laughs> but as I told, thousands of uh, different recipes which are made from like fraction pieces like pastas, woks, and uh, such things. But right. sorry, no sushi. <laughs> <laughs> Good to hear. Uh, Mr. Gatsiha, please. Yeah, so <clears throat> in our company, of course, we have many and different goals for the next three and five years, but I would definitely would like to highlight one of them and the, the key purpose why we, we exist is about the sustainability. So we are on the global level, we are part of many uh, sustainable uh, committees and uh, we are seeking um, ourselves and committed to, first of all, uh, Schneider to achieve uh, 100% of uh, energy consumed by the renewables uh, to move fully towards the electrical vehicles. Uh, this is actually that global global uh, uh, goals. And if we speak about our customers, our partners, and overall fighting for the for the climate change and so on, and definitely we are aim to to help our partners and and the customers to to be more efficient and to be more sustainable. Because what we see right now during this year, especially. When the, uh, with the COVID-19, uh, it definitely shows as the planet, as the society, society that we need uh, as, uh, as a planet to accelerate, definitely. And uh, the, one of the key uh, points here is, is digital, digital technologies and implementation um, everywhere and to, to seek efficiency in order to uh, have a direct impact on the, on the CO2 emissions. This is the... Thank you. How Mm -hmm. And finally, Mr. Dlofi, please. Yeah. <coughs> uh, we will be uh, the most preferred uh, solution providers for companies uh, who want to earn more. We, uh, we are going to provide the most profit possible uh, out of the uh, production process, and this will be done by uh, engineering of mechanical, mechatronical, and automation things, and both IT solutions. Complex solution for business decision makers will be the basis of our success in um, the coming years. Thank you, thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, it was it was uh, nice to have you. Uh, wonderful stories. Uh, I wish you nothing but the success in, in in future, and really to achieve the goals that you mentioned. Thank you, thank. You.